morning, saints, again, and welcome to our worship service for this fourth Sunday after Epiphany, this great wintry day. And uh, thank you as well for those of you who continue to remain with us, those of you who were with our Bible study just a moment ago, and you're now worshiping with us. We also welcome our family and friends who are with us, and we just thank you for spending this wonderful time with us as we give thanks to our loving God. You see all that snow out there? It just shows the greatness and power of our God, that He is still Lord, He is still in control in the midst of all these things. And so it is right that we come together to praise and glorify him as we thank him for the good and loving God he is. So saints, that being the case, let us bow our heads in prayer and then we'll begin our worship. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, O most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us eternal life through your death and resurrection. And Lord, Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing us to faith through the preaching of the gospel and through the waters of holy baptism and making us children of God and keeping us in faith unto life eternal. Holy Father, we just thank you, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this great day, this fourth day of the Epiphany, we continue to celebrate all the ways, dear God, in which you displayed your son, Jesus. And so today, dear Lord, we're going to be looking in, in our sermon about how uh, you calm the sea and how the disciples wondered, what kind of man is this? What manner of man is this? Well, we know, O oh God, Lord Jesus, you're not just a man, but you're God and man. So today we're here to celebrate you. And so, dear Lord, we ask that you would receive our, our praise and adoration from our various homes. And we ask, O oh God, that you will bless us with your presence through your word and that you would teach us. And so, oh God, we thank you for your mercy. In Christ, our oh Lord, name we praise you. Amen. And now, saints, we make our beginning to our loving and wonderful God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Psalm 32 tells us, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit. As Moses speaks to the people through God's saints, we confess those times we, we did not listen to God's words and we closed our hearts to him. Dear Lord, we ask your forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord. As Paul warns us, we confess those times when our freedom in Christ causes one who is weak uh, to uh, one who calls one who is weak in faith to stumble. Forgive us, Lord. As Jesus, the long awaited prophet and savior, taught with and showed his authority and power. We confess those times when we allow the forces of evil to make us forget the deliverance and love of God we have in Christ. Forgive us, Lord. With David the psalmist, we humbly come before you, O God, and we say, I acknowledge my sin to you, O Lord, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you, O God, forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, saints, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you, O Lord, at times when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me, O God, with shouts of deliverance. And now, saints, re receive the Lord's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and given his only son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To those saints who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, saints, who has begun this good work in you and me, bring it to full completion on the great and mighty day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Saints, the word of God tells us many are the sorrows of the wicked, but, stud, but steadfast love surrounds the ones who trust in him. And today, dear Lord, we are going to trust in you. And saints, we're going to trust and believe in God. Even in the midst of all of our troubles, the bad weather, everything, COVID, we're going to trust in the Lord because his steadfast love surrounds us. And now, saints, we're going to have our prayer of the day and then our scripture readings. If you wish to mark your Bibles ahead of time, our Old Testament reading is Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 20. Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 20. It's entitled A New Prophet Like Moses. Our epistle reading is 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13. The theme in our freedom not causing others to stumble. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13. Our Holy Gospel lesson is the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1. Mark 1, 21 to 28. Mark 1, 21 to 28. In this Gospel reading, our Lord Jesus teaches with authority and shows his power over unclean spirits. Okay, Mark 1, 21 to 28. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13, Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 20. Let's now have our prayer of the day, saints. Let us bow our heads in prayer. The Lord be with you and your response and also with you. Saints, let us pray. <coughs> Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of many dangers, especially in these times, and that our frailty in our frailty, we cannot stand upright. Lord, grant strength and protection to support us in all the dangers that surround us and carry us, O oh Lord, through all these days and all these temptations. In your word, dear Lord, is power over order and, and chaos, light and darkness, life and death. Grant your Holy Spirit to us that we become instruments of yours by your grace humbly serving you in these difficult times through the perfect prophet and savior of this world, Jesus Christ. It is in his name, our Lord and savior, who lives and reigns with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So saints again, opening up your Bible to Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 20 entitled, A New Prophet Like Moses. And Moses writes in Deuteronomy 18, because we believe Moses too have written the Pentateuch, the first five, uh, first five books of the Bible. It reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. And this is Moses speaking. It says, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, you are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth. This is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whatever will, and whoever will not listen to my words, that she shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And this is the word of the Lord. And in our epistle lesson, 1 Corinthians 8, 1 to 13, the Apostle Paul writes about in our freedom, we should not cause others to stumble. And Paul writes, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. 
this knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that these and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, he's referring to, you know, all the leaders, the big people of this world. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom, all, from whom are all things and from whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, to whom all things and through whom we exist, meaning Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. They, they may be kings upon the earth, but they're small next to the creator of the earth. However, not all possess this knowledge, meaning they don't know about the idols, but some, through former association with idols, Eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. They do not know that there's only one God and that these idols are nothing. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus sinning against your consciences or against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Make my brother stumble. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Mark 1, 21 to 28. And a little bit of a background. It says, Jesus taught with authority. The leadership did not know what to do because they'd never heard anyone teach like this before. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Mark 1.27 In a world saints filled with inert opinions about spiritual matters, we need the teaching with authority from Jesus. We need his teaching and his alone, for it brings victory and eternal life. He commands our destiny by his cross and his resurrection. So our gospel reading is the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 1, 21 to 28. And the Lord speaks to us. They went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was his practice was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, saints, as we prepare our hearts for God's word, consider for a moment what we have heard. Consider how our lessons speak about how the, uh, the um, knowledge of Jesus spread, his fame spread everywhere. We want that to happen in our day and time, too, as we witness to what God has done for us. But first we have to understand, what is Jesus? And ponder him. 
Because we can't tell others about someone we don't know, do we? With that in mind, let us open our Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. You already have your hand on Mark. But we're going to look at Mark 4, Mark chapter 4, verse 1, and then verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 1, and then jump to 35 to 41. The theme of our meditation this morning is, What manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? And let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh God, we live in times in a world where many have forgotten you or turned from you or won't come to you. We live in a time of viruses, a great virus. We live in a time, oh God, of death. We live in a time of social and political upheaval. We live in a time of institutionalized racism. We live in a time where we kill each other, rob each other in Chicago, the carjackings, all these things. And yet in the midst of it, you tell us to go fishing. In the midst of it, you calm the sea. In the midst of it, you teach us. And like those of that latter day, years ago, like the disciples, we say, what manner of man is this? Who is this? Help us know that you are and continue to be our Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray now that you would open my lips. And I pray, O oh God, that you would give me the words to say to your people. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would enable me to speak your word for our mutual growth in faith. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O God, our rock and our redeemer. O Lord, open thou my lips that I might declare your praise in the presence of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So, saints, open up your Bibles, Mark 4, verse 1, and in 35 to 41. Theme of our meditation, what manner of man is this. And Saints, our text reads, Again Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. Verse 1. Now jumping to verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, What is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is the word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Saints, it had been a long, hard day of preaching. Verse 1 tells us, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. We had read earlier today that they followed Jesus because they wanted to hear the word of God. They crowded him so much that he could not even preach to them properly unless he moved off from the, uh, from the edge of the, wa of, the, of the water. Because it had been a long day of preaching for our Savior. The crowds were so large he had to get into a boat once again just to get elbow room. Just out from the shore, the Lord teaches them. 
You know, the crowds listen. All the people present gathered around the seashore. Some sat on the sand as close to the water as possible. It says they were near the water's edge. Others let the waves creep between their toes. Doesn't that feel good, especially when we think about the snow out there and over their feet? Some stayed on the beach and sat on driftwood or the remains of a fishing boat. But they all sat and listened as the Lord taught them. We learn from other scriptures that he taught them the parable of the sower. They pondered the lamp on a stand. They heard the parable of the growing seed. They heard the parable of the mustard seed. And finally, at the end of the day, the Lord and his disciples were all alone. They ended all alone. This is when the Lord would teach his disciples and all of us about his real identity and what kind of man he really is. You see, he had taught the people. Then he made time to teach those men who would be his disciples. In other words, saints, as we study the word of God, as we worship together in our individual homes, and as one day I pray, I know it will, we'll worship together collectively in person. The Lord still takes us at the end of the day alone by ourselves, where he teaches us his real identity and what he really is. Well, the first thing we learn about our Lord Jesus from our text, he is the man who invites us to travel with him throughout all of our lives. Verse 35 and 36 <coughs> says, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Our Lord said to his disciples and all of us, let us go over to the other side. He says this all the time as we study his word. His purpose was to be alone with his disciples. He sought fellowship with them. Saints, the Lord wants us to study his word and to pray to him so we can be alone with him. And going with him offered them the promise of his fellowship on the journey, the promise of his fellowship on the other side, the promise of safe passage to the other side. Well, the Lord longs for fellowship with us so that he can go with us on this journey till we get to the other side, the eternal place, heaven. How much of this day of the Lord is like many of our days, isn't it? For a lot of us, each day is a long and hard day. Some of us, especially as we're so isolated, not able to get out. When we get out, we have to come and go. where We can't go everywhere, although it's getting better. But there's still so much to do. And there's never enough time to do it. There's our family. There's appointments. There are commitments. Then, of course, the unexpected, which occurs without warning. Here on this shore, in this life, we're oft, often overwhelmed with all the work and all the pressure. So Jesus invites us today, saints, this morning to travel with him to the other side. He longs to fellowship with us. He longs to share with us and have us share with him. In a way, he says, how was your day, dear? He wants to journey with us in this life. He wants us to arrive safely at the end of the day on the other side. And although it seems like he is just a passenger in our lives, he is really the driver. Amen. As we go on, we learn something else about our Lord Jesus from this text. He is the man who is with us in all the storms of this life. Verse 37 reads, A furious squall came up, and the winds broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Saints, for the disciples, it had to have been a terrible storm. Remember, they are professional fishermen. We can only imagine the high wind, the tremendous thunder, the striking lightning. In addition, the water coming into the boat, so much so that the boat nearly sank. It reminds me of when two wonderful members of St. Philip 
took me and Vicky and the boys on a ride on Lake Michigan in their boat. It was a great thrill. But boy, those waters began to be a little choppy. And although we had our, our life jackets on, I still pondered, what if we fell over? You will note that our text states that a furious squall came up. All of a sudden, the storm appeared without warning. And this reminds us this is what the world is like. The world is suffering due to the influence of sin. Saints, we know we have earthquakes, we have hurricanes, we have typhoons, we have tornadoes, and we even have tsunamis. And in some cases, they come without warning. Although we have satellites, like the storm, the storm of snow we're having, we were warned about that. But this reminds us that the world is in distress. For Paul writes in Romans 8.22, We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Sin has done a job on our planet and our world environment. That's why, that's why we have COVID-19. Saints, God isn't punishing us. That's not what God does. God works with us through love and grace. But because of our sin, we have these type of things happen to us. However, there is a lesson for us here. Storms came to the disciples while they were with Jesus. They were traveling with Jesus. They had obeyed his command to come with him to the other side, yet the storm came anyway. And some of us today may be pressing through a storm in our lives as well. We have Come, been coming along with Jesus and a storm came anyway. We've been serving the Lord and we end up having this illness. We've been serving the Lord and we end up needing this surgery or these treatments. Storms come. But like this storm for the disciples, notice their words. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? God has a purpose for the storm, especially when we don't understand it. God did not bring it but God will use it to bring us closer to him. Scripturally, we know that Jonah's storm was designed to help him overcome backsliding. For the Apostle Paul, his storm was, was to open new doors of witness. For the disciples, the storm was to test and strengthen their faith. But please note that all the time Jesus was with them. God was with Jonah. God was with Paul. And God is here physically with the disciples. Jesus was so confident that our text says Jesus was in the stern, in the stern of the ship, sleeping on a cushion. Sleeping on a cushion. Imagine that. Our storms have a purpose for us, saints. I know COVID is getting to us. I know staying in the house. I know being away from each other, fellowship. But, there, but these, even COVID-19, are for to deal with some issues that we deal with. They are designed either for our backsliding, our witness, or to test and strengthen our faith. But the point is, regardless of the storm, Jesus is with us to take us to the other side safely. Amen. And finally, we learn this, that he is a man who is up to the occasion. He is up to and will take care of COVID. He is up to all the issues that confront us in this life, spiritual, physical, mental, emotionally, whatever it is, societal, political, God can handle it. Our text says he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He says that to us this morning. He says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? <coughs> Text says they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. You see, although the Lord was weary in the midst of the storm, he was asleep in the stern. Because he remember, because remember, he is God and man. He did get tired. But he arose as God and commanded the wind and the waves, and they obeyed. The waves ceased, and the water or sea flattened. The moon broke through the clouds, and the only sound was the slight movement of the boat 
and probably the beating of the disciples' hearts. So, saints, as we end our message for this morning, what manner of man is Jesus? You see, he is the man ready to deal with the storms of our lives. He is the man who can calm the storms of our lives. And he is the man who can bring peace during the storms of our lives. Don't worry about the snow. We'll dig our way out. For he is son of man, but he's also son of God. And now, saints, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or desire, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. In Jesus' holy name, God bless us with his word. Amen. And now, saints, let us confess our faith with the church universal in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us individually in our homes and with our loved ones confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, saints, as a member of the Church of God, as part of these branches of Zion, we will pray together our prayer of the Church. Let us bow our heads. St. Philip, family and friends, let us pray, pray for the Church of God and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Scriptures both law and gospel, in which we see our sin and yet see your love in our Savior. As Christ is true prophet and Savior of the world, give us faith to continue to hear his voice and to find comfort in his word of salvation. Bless the proclamation of the word and raise faithful servants who will share your commands and the forgiveness that comes through Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-giving Lord, grant continued faith by your Holy Spirit through the hearing of your word that we have fed and nourished today, producing us good fruit for the sake of selves and others, that we not cause others to stumble, but walk firmly in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, let us all say, hear our prayer. All-powerful Lord, at whose word and authority even unclean and evil spirits submit and obey, hinder the work of Satan in our lives that your kingdom and victory be known to all. Give your peace and presence to those who suffer any affliction, including, O oh God, those whom we will take a moment to name in our hearts. And, O oh God, we include our nation, our national leaders. We ask protection from all terrorism, all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we ask for guidance and direction of your church, that you remove the partisanship from us and that our minds be focused on you, dear Lord, and not the things of this world. And at the same time, dear Lord, enable us to do those things that are right and just that all men and women may receive their rights as they should as, as citizens of this nation. Enable us, O oh God, to be a blessing to all in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, let us all say, hear our prayer. And O oh God, with our additional petitions, Lord, I pray that you would bless our efforts to repair our roof, that you would make a way for us to have the funding, dear God, for uh, for the water damage of our church, 
I pray, O oh God, your blessing upon all of our church leaders. I pray, O oh God, that uh, you would bless our upcoming Lenten services. I pray, O oh dear God, that more of the vaccine will be available and really distributed for the saving of lives and that you would change the hearts of people. I pray, O oh God, that you would bless our Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, and all of the churches of Christendom, and that you would raise us up, O oh God, to share your word while there's still time. And I pray, O oh God, you would change the hearts of people to confess their sins and believe in you as Lord, and you would strengthen us as your church to be, to be uh, faithful stewards of what you've given us. And Lord, that you would not take our candle lamp off of your altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I also pray for all who are on our sick and shut-in list, all who need your healing touch. And finally, dear Lord, I pray for our individual needs of our families and ourselves. And finally, O oh God, into your hands I commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, saints, let us pray the prayer that our dear Savior taught us, recorded in Matthew 6, verses 9 through 11. The disciples once asked the Lord Jesus, how shall we pray? And he taught them thus. Let us pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, saints, that we have worshipped with God, and that we have shared the word, uh, with each other. There may be those among us who have come to believe and trust in God. If you've joined us this morning, we ask you to continue to worship with us here at St. Philip. We will let you know when we get back to uh, the sanctuary, but we'll still continue to have our virtual services in addition. But if you're listening, all of those within the sound of my voice, Hear the words of Romans 10, 9 to 10. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is God's promise. For Paul writes, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, meaning made right with God. He separates your sins as far from you as the east is from the west. But it is with your mouth that you confess that he is Lord. You confess your sins and you are saved. Amen. Friends, there's only one way to spend eternity. There's only one way to get to the other side. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit that you confess your sins, which you can do right now. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you will be saved. Like Peter, you start off calling him Master and then as you get to know him more and believe in him, you call him Lord and he calls you son or daughter. So saints, believe today. Confess your sins and receive eternal life and have victory. And now our closing prayers, we prepare to depart from one another. Heavenly Father, as we begin another week, make us mindful that you have prepared good works that you expect us to accomplish. Open our eyes to see your hand guiding us so that we can do those works that glorify you. If there's someone in need, grant us compassion. If there's someone hurting, give us grace to help and comfort them. If there's someone who needs to know you better, give us the right words to say to lead that person closer to you. Thank you for going with us this week and always. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And now, saints, before we receive the benediction, just a couple of announcements. Remember to continue uh, to follow the three W's. 
wash your hands, wear your mask, and watch your distance. Even if you've already had the vaccine, you still have to keep doing this. For those of you waiting, like me and so many other people, faithfully wait. The government will get them out, will get them. Right now, they're focusing on people who are 65 and older and have preconceived pre, uh, preconditions. Uh, then they'll finally get to the rest of us. Let's keep loving and trusting God. And once again, even after you get your first vaccine, even the second one, continue to follow the three W's. Second announcement, we are still offering drive through communion for those of us at St. Philip. Please give us a call. Come in and receive the body and blood of Christ. Until then, know your baptism covers you. But remember that body and blood of Christ is so important to strengthen and preserve your faith in these difficult times. Three, remember to continue to pray on your own. Study God's word. Follow our Bible study on Wednesday. Okay, we're in the book of Psalms. It's a great book, 11 o'clock. Continue to pray for loved ones. And then uh, finally, uh, beginning February 17th is Ash Wednesday. And so as pastors, we've met together and we have put together our uh, Lenten services midweek. They will be live streamed and we're just trying to get uh, everyone confirmed, the locations and the pastors. And we'll get that out to you as soon as possible so that you can worship with us either together and we will follow CDC guidelines um, or certainly you can follow through, uh, through uh, YouTube or Facebook. So God bless you and keep you. And let's receive now the benediction of our Lord, beginning with Psalm 32, verse 10. Saints, the psalmist writes, Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Receive the Lord's blessing, first given to Aaron many, many years ago. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance, meaning grant you his favor. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And if you'd like to find it, it's in Romans, I mean in Numbers, Numbers 6, 24 to 26. God bless you. Hope to share the word with you on Wednesday. Take care. Amen.